are with Benoit Guez of Moet. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. So today we're going to talk about the 101s of champagne, because people might love champagne, but they perhaps don't know as much about it mm -hmm. as other wines. So first, what are the basics about champagne that people should know? The first basic is that champagne comes from champagne. Of course. You know, champagne is not a category. Mm -hmm. It's a wine produced in a specific region mm -hmm. in France. Um, with very specific, specific laws and, uh, and winemaking techniques. And so what is the unique climate and terroir of Champagne that makes Champagne have such a specific taste? Uh, in terms of soil, most of the vines in Champagne are planted on chalk. It drains the water when there is too much rain and it keeps enough moisture when there is some drought. And on top of that is the climate. The Champagne vineyards in France are located on the northern limit to grow grapes. It's, let's say, one and a half hour drive east from Paris. During the uh, ripening season of the grapes, we have a very slow uh, ripening, and therefore the fruits manage to preserve a great elegance and freshness. And so for a lot of wines, you recognize them by the name of the grape. What grapes are used in making champagne? By the law, we can use seven different grapes mm. uh, for making champagne, but honestly, three of them are mostly used. The most planted is Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. that is the very famous in Burgundy and in some other vineyards mm -hmm. uh, nowadays. It represents about 38% of the vineyards in Champagne. The second variety used in Champagne is Meunier. Meunier is not that well known, it's more specific to Champagne. It's a cousin of the Pinot Noir, presents 33% of the vineyards, so one third of the vineyards are planted with Meunier. And the third variety used is Chardonnay, also very well known. Mm -hmm. And Chardonnay represents 29% of the vineyards in Champagne. When people think of winemaking, what is different in Champagne production versus your typical wine? Alors, um, we start with the harvest. Mm. Same. <laughs> the same, but in Champagne, uh, all the harvest is made by hand. Mm. Okay, we don't use machines because we produce mostly white wines with red grapes. Both Pinot Noir and Meunier are red grapes. So if you harvest with machines, you will have some maceration mm -hmm. of the juice and the skin and, and the, the, the wine won't stay white as we like it to be. So the grapes come to the press center, then we press and we press very gently in Champagne. Once the juice has been extracted, we are going to ferment. After that, we do a second fermentation, fermentation non, called the malolactic fermentation. The idea being to soften the acidity of our champagnes. Mm -hmm. After that, we have what we call the base wines. Once the blend has been decided, once I've decided how to combine together the Pinot Noir, the Meunier, the Chardonnay from the different regions, we are going to do the bottling. And at bottling time, we will, have, we will add a little bit of sugar and a little bit of yeast in the bottle, and then we seal the bottle. And the bubbles are made. And then the <laughs> yeast is going to find some sugar, we'll transform it again into some alcohol and carbon dioxide and that's the reason why of the effervescence in the champagne. That will uh, take about five weeks. Mm. After that, the yeast is going to die into the bottle mm. and give its body to the wine. And let's talk about vintages of mm -hmm. champagnes and aging champagnes, because I think most people think of it and they say, well, doesn't the effervescence go away? So how do you approach vintages of champagne? I think first it's important to make the difference between vintage and non-vintage. Right. If I come back to our terroir and our climate, we have huge variations uh, in climate and therefore in quality. Some years can be outstanding, it mm -hmm. is the vintage years. Some years can be average. Therefore, the Champenois have come a long time ago with the idea of keeping in reserve some wines from the very best years in order to blend with wines from lesser good years in order to achieve more consistency in quality. And it is only when uh, we are able to select out of one special year wines that are, let's say, balanced on their own, mm. that we will produce a vintage champagne. Is it because consumers expect more consistency of champagne than obviously they do of other wines where they like the variations in the years? It is, it, no, it's that in other vineyards, variations are limited. So we know that from one year to another one, you will have variations, but nevertheless, they are, they are limited. In Champagne, they can be extreme, yeah. okay? It can be outstanding one year and very bad another one. The idea with the vintage is to do the opposite. If non-vintage mm -hmm. is uh, consistency, with the, with the vintage, I'm looking for, I wouldn't say inconsistency, but I'm looking for variations in style. And on top of that, it has much more maturity. And maybe it's what's the most noticeable when tasting non-vintage versus vintage. There is much more yeasty character 
in the vintage because it has been kept for much longer. Can you ever keep a champagne too long? Is there a point at which if someone says, I'm going to give you a, you know, 1923 champagne? Champagne, like any other wine, is a living product. Right. Uh, so it goes through phases and one day it's over. Right. So yes, you can keep a champagne for too long. Uh, in the case of a non-vintage, uh, it is not made to be kept for years and years. Right. And, and the big difference compared to uh, any other wine is that we age the wine ourselves. People might be looking at this and saying, why are they drinking this out of a wine glass and mm -hmm. not a champagne flute or a coupe? You know, explain how the glassware affects the champagne and how we should approach drinking champagne. As any other wine, if you pour one bottle into 10 different glasses, you will have 10 different wines. Right. The glassware does uh, affect a lot the tasting experience. If you serve the champagne in a coupe, in a large coupe, mm -hmm. you you will you won't have enough focus. You know the effervescence will go everywhere, the flavors will go everywhere, and you are going to lose a lot of it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you serve the champagne in a narrow flute, the champagne won't have room to open up, to breathe, and to develop all its potential. So what we uh, promote today is the idea of of drinking champagne that is a white wine in a white wine, wine glass. glass. Uh, like this one, for instance, it's large enough for the wine to breathe and to develop its flavors, but then it's refocused in order to get all the flavors in your nose on your palate. So should we swirl? Should we sniff? I mean, how do we go about drinking? You swirl bit? in order to develop the intensity. You get the first smell. Mm. Usually there is a second layer of flavors that will come a little bit later. And you taste the champagne the same way you, will, you would taste any, any other wine. Thank you so much for illuminating champagne for us as well as Moet. Really Thank appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.